cases, it's not just a matter of knowing when something's failing. We also want to find out how we can manage the resources on that machine. And we really get into that a lot into our applications class. But we're going to have Chris Ward come in and talk about the Windows System Resource Manager, which is a very, very cool utility that allows you to kind of throttle systems before um, resources are exhausted by greedy little applications or application pools. The Windows System Resource Manager, or WSRM tool, allows administrators to limit the amount of CPU and memory resources that any individual application can be using. Additionally, WSRM can be used to manage multiple users on a single computer, such as multiple users accessing a single server, let's say using terminal services. Now also, besides managing the total amount of CPU with WSRM, it's also possible to actually specify the processor affinity. Now, processor affinity is used to link a specific process with a specific processor. For example, you could have a system with four processors and you want to ensure that an application only uses the fourth processor. Now, obviously, this is getting pretty complex. So, using WSRM with processor affinity should be done sparingly. Now here are some of the goals of WSRM. Ensuring a critical application has enough resources. That's what WSRM can be used to do. It can ensure that a single application always has enough resources at its disposal. For example, if you're running IIS as an intranet server and also using the same server as a file and print server, you may want to ensure that IIS always has enough resources in order to handle that. There are also ways that WSRM can be used to prevent applications from eating up too many resources. And you can even stop users from taking too much resources for themselves. WSRM also includes an accounting capability that actually allows you to identify specifically how many resources any individual user is consuming. So data can be fed into a Microsoft SQL Server database and then can be used to identify how much users are charged based on usage. That's huge. And when WSRM senses that a process is exceeding its allocated resources, well, it first tries to change the resource usage by changing the priority of the process. But if this doesn't succeed, then WSRM can use an algorithm to adjust the resources that the process can use. You know, this works similarly to how you, if you have a car and you put a governor on it. So some companies want to make sure that their car drivers aren't exceeding a certain speed. So a governor is installed on the car and that'll prevent the car from exceeding the desired speed. So if you think about it, when you're using WSRM, you can use that the same way a governor is put on a car. You can put a governor on the resources being used by Windows Server 2008. And you're really going to want to manage this based upon what the server is going to be used for. I mean, if it's a file server where you're talking to the hard drive and pulling from the hard drive, managing which process of the file copy <laughs> happens on really isn't going to do a whole lot. So in our SharePoint class, we talk about uh, System Resource Manager. In our Exchange class, we talk about System Resource Manager. Uh, in this class, we just kind of give you the basics. Now, the first basic is you have to install it. It is not a role. It is going to be a feature. So let's go ahead and add the feature. So I'm going to go into Features, and we will go ahead and add the feature. So I'll say Add Feature, and we want Windows System Resource Manager. Windows System Resource Manager. So I'll say OK. It does have to add an internal database. And we'll just say add the required feature. I will say next. I will say install. And it goes through and installs it. Not super, super exciting. However, we do have what are called resource allocation policies. And what these resource allocation policies do is they've given you some defaults. And the ones that are listed here for 2008, 2008 R2 has some additionals. Where you can say, I want this to be equal per process, equal per user, equal per session. Or you can say, I want to be totally unequal. I want to go through and only allow certain applications so much space or certain users, and, and I want to balance it out. So let's go to a machine that already has this stuff installed. So we'll go out to uh, this machine right here. And underneath my administrative tools, I will have Windows System Resource Management right here. So we'll fire that off. This machine's a little bulky today for some reason. It's not, uh, it's not real happy. Maybe I need to reboot it or something like that. But when you're doing this, um, just realize that 
you got to kind of know what you're doing. If you get too hyperactive on here, you can really choke it down to resources and cause problems. You can manage a local machine or another machine. We'll connect to the local machine. And it establishes our connection. And, uh, and again, there's a lot of criteria that you can have, but what we're looking at is our policies. By default, you have equal per process. You can have equal per user. We have equal per IS app pool. And when you're dealing with an internet information server, what that does is, and I've talked about this before, but when you have apps that are running on your IS server, you can put them into separate areas of memory called an application pool. And inside this application pool, these apps can talk to each other. But if one of those apps happen to fail or lock up or do something, it can stop the entire pool. So if I want to, I can have multiple application pools. That way, if my inventory input system fails, it's not going to affect my catalog system, for example. So this allows you to isolate the various, uh, the various web apps that you may be running on your server. We have equal per session, and we also have weighted remote sessions. And if you like, you can go in and you can create a, your own custom. Um, something else that's kind of cool is that you can go in and you can do uh, certain criteria. I can go in and say that this application is using this DLL or this executable or it's running from this particular user, and then I can have customized resource allocations based on that. We don't go way in depth on it here, but if you really want to know all the configuration options of the uh, resource manager, I do recommend you come into our applications infrastructure class. If you want to know something specific about Windows resource management for SharePoint, we have it in SharePoint class or Exchange for the Exchange class, so on and so on. But it does allow you to really control how the applications are going to use the resources and how they share the resources so that you don't have one app that just you know, or one user that goes in and steals all your memory and all your processor and everything in there.